Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship, everyone, and welcome to those who will be joining us later online. We are so glad that you are here. Farmers, I hope you had a little nice rest with the rain, and hopefully it dries out so you can get back to work, but I've been worried about you. Um, you guys work so hard. Um, and so here's going to a, a strong finish for our harvest, so um, prayers for safety um, as you complete your task. Are there any community announcements or concerns we need to be made aware of today? Mom is home briefly and she'll... Yep. Um, Doreen will be having a procedure to replace her aortic valve. Um, but it is not heart surgery. It's, uh, it's going up through a vein. Um, so it's amazing what medical technology does. Um, and I still don't know how they're able to do it, but they insist that that can be done. <laughs> and we're just very grateful for that. So her surgery is on Tuesday, so please keep her and hope the whole of Erickson clan in your prayers. Any other concerns or announcements? Merv's not doing good. I forgot to tell you that. Yes, we heard Merv um, and Becky were here on Sunday, but it sounds like Merv is... Uh, had a relapse in his pain and whatnot, so we're we're praying for you, Merv. Um, hang in there, um, and hopefully they figure out what's going on with him soon. With that, let us begin our worship this morning as we confess our need for God. Please rise. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, and the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us, for the unjust demands we place on others in your creation, forgive us, for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us, lead us back to you, and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. It will never 
never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong people will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the nearby, needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of a ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The songs of the ruthless was still. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheep that is spread <coughs> over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. And this and the disgrace of his people will take he will take away from all the earth. For this Lord has spoken, it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our Lord. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is our Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word, word of God, word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The psalm is Psalm 22. Let us read it together. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for many sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is right before Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. I urge Judah and I urge Sinchi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women that they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests by name known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is an excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received, and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. for his son. 
He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent out other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat cows have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. Well, the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, this is indeed the gospel, the good news of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the children are invited forward for a children's message. Rolled over by Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> this morning we're going to talk about something that a lot of people like. Parties! Have you ever been invited? Yes. <laughs> what kind of party? Birthday, a lot of birthday parties, Christmas parties, a lot of parties. Well, what if you got the cake and refreshments and games and you sent out the invitations? And everybody said, oh, I can't wait, I wish to miss it, sounds good. And on the day of the party, nobody showed up. <laughs> One said, I didn't get a good grade on my spelling test, my mother said I can't know. And one said, I have something to do with my brother. And they just didn't come. How would you feel? Pretty bad, yeah. Well, in our story today that Jesus tells, there was a king, and he was having a wedding for his son. And he got all the food ready and everything, and he invited his friends, and guess what? Nobody showed up. He was not very happy, so he sent his slaves out again and said, Go tell these people to come. Everything's ready. We're ready for this party. Nobody came. They had all these excuses. So he was angry by this time. He thought, wait a minute. I invited all my best friends and nobody came. So he told the slaves, go out in the street and just invite anybody that's out there to come to my party. <laughs> and guess what? He filled the wedding hall and probably had a good time. Well, the reason Jesus is telling us this story is that God is the one who's like the king. And he's invited us to be part of his party, to believe and to um, get the good news of Jesus Christ. And we don't always want to accept that, do we? And so God is saying, I want you to accept this. This good news has been going on for 2,000 years, and I want it in your heart, too. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to be part of the party that is the good news of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. 
Amen. Amen. So this is our third week in a row that we get a really challenging parable from Jesus. For those who have been with us this whole journey, remember that um, Jesus entered the triumphant city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and um, he through the money changers and the business deals that were going on in the marketplace, and he went to the to the temple and started teaching. And these parables are designed and purposely pointed at the religious leaders of the temple. And they're a harsh critique of their lifestyle, pointing out that you guys were the original ones who had this amazing message and you kept it all for yourself. You have fruit to grow. God has told you how to live your life with justice and mercy and peace, and you have not been doing this. And he's been telling them harsh parables of what happens when what happens when you fail to follow through in living the life God wants you to live. And so we get this another parable today about um, not heeding the word of God and living that out in, in your life. And it's a weighty, heavy, it's, sometimes, you know, it's hard. Where is the good news in, in all of this? Um, and that then is when you have to take that step back and realize that, you know, it might not be right in that uh, small section of text where you find the, the hope and the promise that we have, that you take that, that step back and, and see Matthew in its full context and see um, how Matthew is so focused on doing the work of God, how the care for the poor and the marginalized and to actually not just saying you believe but having your actions show that you believe, to, to back up what you say with your words um, by action and it accumulates all in the cross of Christ, in the resurrection. And um, that is the good news for us that we cling to in the midst of, of hard times. Now, I don't want to weigh us down. I know um, there's so much already weighing us down in, in the world today. And I really didn't want to put another focus on another challenging parable and have, <coughs> have to wrestle with it. and and be convicted of where we struggle with following God's ways and where we can be liberated and freed by the, um, by the gospel. I want us to focus a little bit on the second lesson that Jayla read so beautifully today. It's not printed in your bulletin, um, but it's the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. Um, and this is actually one of the most joyful letters that Paul writes. And not only that, um, you can really tell how fond he is of the amazing people in Philippi. Um, and he writes them um, words of encouragement at the end of his letter, saying, I know things are going to get, the, things are rough. I know that there's even some disagreements among some of you. Um, he talks about Erodia and Synthi, um, which you did an amazing job of pronouncing their names because I'm not even sure how they're officially pronounced. Um, and, you know, we get these Bible names. You know, I don't know anyone know, named Erodia or Synthi, S-Y-N-T-Y-C-H-E. I do not know anyone by that name. Uh, this is the only mention of them in the Bible, um, but what we learn from them is that these are women leaders of the church, and it looks like that they um, have a little disagreement, and Paul encourages them. He doesn't take sides or, or anything. He just says, come to an agreement. Um, be in the same mind. Um, 
And he asked the community, um, especially Timothy, who's with him, to help these women, for they've struggled beside me in the work of the gospel. Um, and he wants them to, to work out their disputes. And then he gives words of encouragement to the community. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And he doesn't end there. He goes on saying, finally, beloved, as he's wrapping up his letter, he says, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen and in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Beautiful words. Poetic, encouraging, heartwarming. It's hard to believe when we think about it, where Paul was when he wrote these words. Paul is in prison. These words were written by a person chained in a Roman prison, wondering whether he will be sentenced to death for his socially provocative gospel, writing to a community under related social and economic duress. Both are experiencing extreme pressure to back off from the proclamation of the crucified and risen Messiah. This is the kind of message that the imprisoned Martin Luther King Jr. was inspired by in his letter from a Birmingham jail. Words written to strengthen a community under siege for their proclamation of God's justice and concern for all people. It seems clear that these verses were intended as a memorable and inspiring sequences of practices for a community of faith to engage in when they feel overwhelmed by oppression and anxiety. And that still speaks to us today, providing the same practical help in an anxious age. Just think about all the anxieties that are on our plate. Just looking at the news and what's going on in our life. We've got the crisis in the Gaza Strip. The Ukraine-Russia war that just doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. We've got political gridlock that doesn't seem to get anything accomplished. We've got rising of COVID infections. We've got inflation, stress, burnout, uh, not to mention the personal crises that we may have going on in our families. I know personally of people who are struggling with their marriages, thinking of leaving a spouse. I know personally people who are having health issues and um, not sure what the next step is in their continued care. There is so much to worry about. So much anxiety in our world. And I look about you know, my own life and you know, our refrigerator was on the fritz. We just replaced it. Hadn't even had the refrigerator two days and I open the microwave door and the front panel falls off. <laughs> and I just like, all right, I was not planning to to fix, and this isn't just like the mechanism, it's, it's the one that's over the stove that has the exhaust system with it. Um, yeah, it decided it wanted to mesh the refrigerator. And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't need this right now. I don't have time to deal with this. Paul's words 
to the Philippians speak to us just as powerfully. He gives us faith practices for then and for now. He says, rejoice. And he repeats it twice, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Don't just expect joy to arrive on its own, but commit yourself to practices of godly joy every day. In fact, I encourage you to keep a joy journal. Write down places and things that give you joy. It will help put things in perspective. Paul goes on to then say, let your gentleness be known to everyone. No one is at their best right now, including you. So be gentle to absolutely everyone, including yourself. Paul then writes, the Lord is near. Suka seconds, powerful when you really, truly look at it and understand. The Lord is near. Take moments to experience the reality that you are surrounded by transcendent compassion that is larger and deeper than you. Paul then said, don't worry about anything, but with prayer and thanksgiving, let your concerns be made known to God. That doesn't mean necessarily don't worry, but don't obsess about your worries. You don't have to brush them under the rug either, but share them with God. All the worry and the gratitude together. God can handle it. And then he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This conversation with God is a source of peace beyond our capacity to understand. Relish it. Embrace it. Be aware of it. Commit yourself not simply, not to simply obsess over all that is going wrong, all the evil and destruction you see in the world. Turn your attention to things that really matter, to where you see action that is worthy of respect, to places where justice is being done, to goodness in all its forms. Make a list of them if you have to. Literally, as in verses, verse 8, verse, chapter 4, verse 8, literally, tally up these things. It says in the NRSV, think on these things. But literally in the Greek, tally these things up. Keep track of them, where God is at work in your life. Paul gives similar wise advice and simpler wording in 1 Thessalonians. He said, test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Distance yourself from every evil. This is excellent advice for the times when we feel overwhelmed by negativity and falsehood. And the final practice that Paul encourages his followers of Philippi and his followers today, he says, pay attention to the truly remarkable people around you who will show you how to walk this path. Paul says, look to me and see what I've done and try to imitate it. Who are those people in your life who walk that remarkable life of faith and try to imitate it? The fourth chapter of Philippians is so beautiful and so important for times, for the times that we're living in. There is a sense here in which we are being assured by those who struggled long before us that they came to know for, sure, for certain the strengthening nearness and power of God with and through them, especially when the world seems to be falling apart. 
So be encouraged. Stay strong. Do not lose heart. Practice your faith because the Lord is near. Amen.
for the Church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that the followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord. This week we especially give thanks and pray for the faith of Grace Wenstrom. Strengthen and encourage her so she may feel your presence is near. God of grace, hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters, and all the beauty of the natural world, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all you have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace and prosperity for all. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them. We pray especially for Jeanette, Linda, Chuck, Jeremy, Wanda, Carrie, Nancy, Ted, Doreen, Caroline, and Merv. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, that their faithful witness guides your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with those around us this morning. God's peace be with you, everyone. Thank you. Our giving is an act of worship, and at this time we receive our offering. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table, that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
dies. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What joys and celebrations do we have this week? I celebrate Trace. He got his personal best, his, a PR in his cross-country meet yesterday. Awesome. In, the in the rain. In the rain. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Trace. Good job, Trace. Birthday. Birthday. Birthday for Liz. Today. Today. <laughs> we celebrate with Liz. Did we mention Norm Gross had a birthday on the 13th? And Debbie Olberg had a birthday on the 11th. Um, and my husband and I celebrated our 26th wedding anniversary on the 11th as well. So. What? Oh, we have a new refrigerator now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it broke the microwave. It broke the microwave. As soon as get a new microwave. <laughs> Two announcements. Um, council meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and um, if you would like to have a flyer to put up about the craft fair see me after church and I'll print some flyers off for the craft fair coming up in November so we unload about that we unload the food truck for the food pantry yes. tomorrow yeah. yes and Saturday, Saturday the 21st is also our day to serve at the food pantry, 7.30 yes. on Saturday. Saturday. So. You gotta unload the truck though tomorrow. Yes. 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 Load the truck we are unloading the truck tomorrow. Yep. Alright, Liz, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Receive your blessing. <laughs> the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Yeah. 